Welcome to Blood, Sweat and Metal. This is a Tuesday night, the 22nd of March, 2016. I'm your host, Jamie McNichol, and I'm coming to you live via Google Hangout, coming straight to you from my studio room here. I just got off the phone with Primal Fear lead vocalist, Ralph Sheepers. That's right, Ralph Sheepers. And as a matter of fact, Primal Fear will be here in June. They've got two shows, and it's going to be their first time ever to Australia. They're doing a show in Melbourne, and the following day they're going to Newtown in Sydney to wrap up the very first tour of Australia off the back of their current latest album, Rule Breaker. If you haven't got that album, please go and get it. Um, As a matter of fact... Get to know the words before you go to the concert because um, if Ralph tries to sing and sees you mucking up the words, he's going to muck up the words and he's going to blame you. No, it's all a joke. But no, go and grab it at all your independent record stores and all your major chains like JB Hi-Fi, Sanity, YHD.com. Go down to Clarity Records here in Adelaide. Go to all of them. Go to Utopia Records in Sydney as well. Go and grab this. It's a fantastic album. I have put this album in the top 10 so far for 2016. Imagine what the rest of 2016 is going to bring out with great music. And this this only a taste. So I love to see what's around the corner because it's, it's killing. It is really, really mind-boggling of awesome music awesome what do we talk about in this interview well that's why you got to stick around and listen to this audio section because there's a couple of great questions i conducted towards ralph and one especially about his addition to judas priest when rob halford first left the band to pursue a solo career and also to join fight back in around about 1990 1991 and ralph auditioned for judas priest and there was a bit of a rumor saying that he was replacing rob halford well we obviously clear that up ralph cleared that up with that question so listen to that question and listen to the answer that you come about also we talk about the lyrical content because over the course of their career from 1997 to now they've been critically acclaimed by their lyrical content with each album whether it's more like a science fiction type of thing or metaphorical type of lyric content some of the albums also have a bit of religious government type of lyrical content in it and we just asked was rule breaker around that type of same type of dialogue with the lyrical content and ralph answer that question as well so there's a lot of things that we shared and also we talk what is the routine that he gets himself into when he goes on stage because this is the first time primal fear is coming to australia so the fans would like to know what type of routine does Ralph have before he goes on stage to grab those fans and make that a holy place, a stage, and make it his own? So we'll do all that. I did say it in the last interview episode that on the 29th of March, it will be our two-year anniversary for Blood, Sweat and Metal. We're doing a great big anniversary special. David is coming to join us. And we're going to try to put up a chat room so you can join us live and interact with us. Ask us questions or give us some feedback of what we're going to talk about. There's a lot of things that I'm brainstorming to talk about. Um, predominantly the history and the magic that Blood, Sweat and Metal had have over the last two years. But we are running through the final touches of that, so it would be a massive special treat for you guys and if you want to join us please down below here is a subscribe button for your youtube channel cost you nothing cost you only a click of a button or and press it enter on your keyboard and you can just get subscribed and you'll get all the 
video sh interviews like this straight away. You don't have to wait for me to upload it to Facebook or Twitter. If you are a YouTube subscriber, you get it straight away. As soon as it gets uploaded, bang, you have it. So that's what the whole purpose of being a subscriber is about. And I'm not here about making numbers or gain popularity. This is just a passion I have. I love talking about music and metal and rock. It just happened to be my passion. And I'm so grateful and privileged to be able to get the opportunity to talk to all these great artists from not just Australia but around the world as well so you guys can get inspired and also go on to discover these bands if you haven't already done so. I did mention before, as you see a little bit of a bright light on the side of the screen, I've got a new desktop light here so just giving me a bit more light when I do these things at night time but um it's just so great I do have some other news I want to share the South Australian Music Festival is coming around in May now normally this will be the New Dead Festival but this one is going to showcase only South Australian finest metal bands that we have and thanks to Jason North and Truth Inc. Um, they're bringing this collaboration of great bands for a whole day thing at Fowler's Live on March the 8th. Please get your tickets. I believe this is going to sell out. Um, tickets are running hot. They're running that fast out the hands. People are grabbing it. As a matter of fact, last weekend, I was so thrilled to see two shows that was very, very well supported by the Adelaide community here. Normally, we bit touch and go and, you know, we're a bit picky of who do we support and go and see. But the gig on Friday night at the Enigma Bar and the one with Seven Dust the, the following Monday at the Gov, those two shows was packed. And I am so thrilled just to see the community of the Adelaide support bringing the, the pride and joy back to where it should be. And I just hope this continues on because, you know, as we know, places are closing down due to revenue or whatnot, but we want these bands to keep coming back and for us to support live music and come out in strong numbers, these bands will come. So the two sums up to the Adelaide metal community. You've done us proud. I was there for two nights and... I'm just so thrilled just to be part of that and just to be able to em embrace it and see it and see how great it, it is. If you haven't got your ticket for Black Sabbath, yes, I am wearing a Black Sabbath T-shirt and thanks to my partner for picking it up. Um, it's only a matter of weeks now. They're doing a farewell to it. If you haven't got your tickets, please go and grab that while you still can because this is the last time ever you'll get to see one of the great pioneers of metal or hard rock, Black Sabbath. They won't be touring anymore after this, or pursuing a solo career or whatever project they may have. But if you want to see one of the icons that started that British movement, Black Sabbath is a band to see. And go and grab that. Around the corner from Black Sabbath, you have the Iron Maiden tour. And... I've got some positive news that Ed Force One is now back and running. They've fixed the engines up. If you saw the photos posted on the Iron Maiden website or Facebook page, you know it's a couple of weeks ago the engines were ripped down the side of it and underneath um, some type of connection that transport the plane to get it refueled came off and it caused a massive tear and what have you, damage to the plane. So how that became the two people that were injured, that were transporting the thing, they went to the hospital, making a full recovery. But Iron Maiden still continue the tour. Basically, they've got a tour bus and some trucks and they've continued the South American tour. And well, now the plane has got two brand new engines. It's all ready to go, and the flight for Ed Force One will resume back to North America and head over to China, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, and South Africa. And it's just around the corner. 
from Black Sabbath. So it's just under two months ago before they hit Australia and we cannot wait. I'll be there. Um, it's going to be a massive week for me when that comes around and hopefully we can do some filming and plenty of photos, opportunities and live reports of what's in store. But right now we're going to give you the interview with Primal Fears. That's right, they're coming to Australia for the very first time in June. Sit back, relax. It's about a 20-minute interview with Ralph and myself as we talk about Primal Fear. Catch you next time and day 30 for metal. Catch ya. How are you going? Hey, all right. It's a very good morning so far. For you, it's late in the evening, right? It's 9 o'clock now. Yeah. It's, it's just so um, amazing that I have you on the show. You're coming to Australia for the very first time in a couple of months and coming back off the latest album, Rule Breaker. You guys must yes. be excited coming to Australia for the very first time. We absolutely are excited, believe me, Jamie. So everybody's really happy about the decision. It took so long because of several different parameters like, you know, promoters and stuff. And then you have to cover costs to go there and fly there and stuff. But finally it worked out and we're really looking forward because we've seen so many and, and heard so many good things from Australia. And now this year we're coming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever thought about coming to Australia before? Did Ting didn't fall through for you guys? What, what happened? You know, you, you always think to go everywhere in the world if you can. Mm. It's always sometimes a matter of uh, promoters as well. And we have our, our uh, touring management working for us. And uh, they somehow go into negotiations with the other, the, the other side. And if it's not working out, if you can cover costs or something. I mean, it's even now not easy. It's just the times because we go to Japan and have a tour in North America. We can cover the costs also to come to Australia. But, you know, this time we said, let's do this, because you never know when you come, can come again, you know? Yeah. Well, something that was given to me during this week was a bit of a rumour that you weren't hired as Rob Halford's replacement for Judas Priest. I just want to touch on that. How did that rumour start out? Did you try to audition for Judas Priest when Rob Halford left Judas Priest? Or how did that rumour come about? You know, the thing is, I was actually on the short list, yes, and I was never invited to do any rehearsals. Mm. Um, I did my application back then when the bands uh, just um, g gave out the information that they were looking for a vocalist. Mm. So it was, it was, I think it was 1991 or 1990, I just uh, gave away my tape, uh, um, which is demo tracks and, and stuff from Gamma Ray. And um, then I got a positive letter back that they're interested, but, but then it took a very long period because Glenn did a solo album back then, and um, somehow I think they, they were looking for not a German guy, <laughs> <laughs> which they never somehow um, admitted, but in the end, hey, let's don't talk about the past. I was on the short list, I never was invited, I didn't become the vocalist, which is very good uh, from the perspective from now, because everybody's lucky now, even Tim is, is, is lucky that he's not a priest anymore, he's doing his own stuff, so there's only lucky people left in the end, you know. Mm. Well, you guys have such a great career, you were founded back in 1997 with you, Ralph, and also Matt Sinner as well, but going through the whole duration of the career from 1997 to 2016, you guys have been continually going on the rise from album to album to album. And it's just so great that even the latest album, Rule Breaker, it's so well produced, it's so well constructed. The vocals, the music, the lyric content, it's all there. And I do put that in one of my top 10 albums of 2016 to date. I mean, who knows what the rest of 2016 is going to happen. But Rule, Rule Break is definitely one of the most diverse albums I have listened to, along with the new Anthrax album and the Megadeth album. This is a real killer album. Thank you so very much for your words, yeah. Peter. Uh, no, sorry. Um... Jamie, sorry, I had four other members before. The thing is, you know, it's uh, 
We're really happy to have five writing members, and I absolutely agree with you that we are now having just released our best album so far, and we're happy and lucky about that. And um, like I said before, we have the advantages to have five writing members, and that's a very good thing if, if it comes to having ideas. Mm. And I already found out in the demo phase for Rule Breaker that this is going to even top Delivering the Black, which was not that easy, but we got it in the end. And we're really happy. We're also happy about the acceptance and the reactions of the fans and the press out there. It's just amazing, and uh, we just hope it will continue like that. Yeah. And what's so great about Primal Fear is not only are you a power metal band, but you also got some other elements to put in the mix of the, the whole musical thing. You got some pure thrash metal in there, and also you got tra traditional heavy metal, and most importantly, you got that 70 European hard rock sound that everyone loves. I mean, with the bands like Accept and, you know, some of the other bands, even you, though, when he went solo, all that element is all packed into a Primal Fear thing. I'm not saying you're trying to replicate what they've done. This is Primal Fear. That's a, a set. But you guys are hand in hand. You guys are really rallying the flag for the European hard rock metal scene as we speak. It's because we love it, Jamie. It's because we love it because we are... I mean, I'm, I was... Growing my musical career up in the 80s in the new wave of British heavy metal phase, and uh, we just really are absolutely authentic when we are re re releasing songs in an album like that. We do not pretend or we do not hop on a trend or whatever, we just love what we do and we always will do that. And I think that's, that's what the people also feel and hear that we love what we do. You can also see it on stage. So um, I think yeah, it works. It works really well. Yeah, it does. And what also good about Primal Fear is it's a there's a lot of theoretical themes in with the music. I mean, you guys have also been claimed that you're a bit critical and controversial because the lyric content in Primal Fear's work are science fiction but it's also often thought to be metaphorical as well. But I want to ask, when it came to Rule Breaker, was the lyric content more to do with the religion, government issues rather than the science fiction issue? You know, sometimes you just pick up those themes which are somehow um, touching people, of course, and you make your own stories around it. And uh, when we write stuff... We are critical in a certain way, yes, that's true. And um, when we're also uh, human beings, we don't agree to everything what, what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. But we can we can make the world a, a better place with the lyrics, of course. But we maybe somehow give people a little bit of a of a um, feeling to to think about stuff or whatever. And we also want to give people somehow. Um, the feeling not to surrender, never give up feeling, you know, because sometimes it's just science fiction stories which, where one guy is just a warrior, whatever, they're coming to kill me, whatever, but I, I never will give up and so forth, which is um, in this certain story maybe a little bit of a war theme, but uh, you can always take these uh, feelings and this theme for your personal uh, situation you are in, uh, no matter how difficult it is, never give up and that's what we try to deliver to with our lyrics also a little bit to to give the people a good vibration and in, in, in the, in the confidential thought of never giving up and go go the way you are you try to go you will try to go and, and keep going it you know yeah and it just so surreal that with all the elements of prima fear musical content it just shines through, no matter if it's religion, whether it's government issues, whether it's science fiction. You you guys are telling a story, and it's your own testimony, and you've got your fingerprints all over it now. That's your DNA now. And once that album gets released, the fans are just picking up and picking it up and picking it up. That leads me to the next question. 
with the way that the digital media is at the moment, where you have got Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube, so to speak, do you think it plays a huge part in parcel with the band so-called success today when it comes to album sales? Because a lot of people will sound like they want to hear a single, but they don't want to hear a full album, therefore they go to iTunes and just buy a single. Where me, on the other hand, who is a, an old school fan, will wait till the day of the release of the album and go and buy a copy or two. Yes, I mean, this is this is nowadays, of course, an advantage and a disadvantage. Of course, sometimes people don't go out and pick the whole album because they have to, or they might want to buy many albums and uh, also have to take a look at their purse, which sometimes not is possible to get so many releases which are coming out a month. So it, the, the advantage behind buying single songs then is that they at least buy songs on iTunes and stuff. But I always say, if you get only one thong, song, you somehow it's just like ripping ripping out one chapter of a book and just reading this one chapter. You have to have the whole book in the end, is my opinion. And uh, uh, so um, I would still go out there as a fan buying the whole album, which is pretty much in metal still um, the case that uh, metal people are still good followers and, and, and really true fans who are going out there and, and, and get the whole piece because they want to have everything from the band they, they adore. And uh, this is very unique in metal. That's what I love about it, uh, yeah. behind it, you know. Do you regard Real Breaker one of the, this is the best material that, Primal Fear has recorded to date. I mean, there's been so many great albums throughout the career leading up to today. But do you put Prime, the new latest Primal Fear album, Rule Breaker, right up there with Amongst the Best? Yes, I mean, of course, the, the very the very new release, you would hear every musician saying it's, it's the best effort so far. But this time, it's really, it's no line behind it that I absolutely... I'm very satisfied with Rule Breaker and see it as one of the best releases out there uh, for Prime of Fear, yes. Mm. I mean, would, if you ever thought that you wanted to change something on the album, what would you change on it or are you happy with it? Because some bands that I know, they're quite not really satisfied with the final product. They might have missed something or they needed something. With, that, with you, do you feel there should have been something extra in there or you're quite happy with the final product. I'm absolutely happy with the final product of Rule Breaker. This yeah. really um, started with delivering the black already, and also now with Rule Breaker, we're absolutely on um, exactly the track we want to be sound-wise and also song-wise, so I'm absolutely happy. But the thing is, as soon as we are finished with an album, and as soon as it's released, for us, it's old already, you know. So we're, we're just looking ahead. We don't look to the past and look back. We just move forward and, and we will see what, what's coming up next. And we still, as I said, we are satisfied with almost every release out there. Not sound-wise, song-wise, yes. Song-wise, it was always a little bit of a struggling uh, on the albums before Delivering the Black and so forth. But it was just also a learning phase for us musicians in terms of recording. And it's not only a mixing thing it's, and it's, it's, uh, or a sound thing. It's also um, um, uh, a thing of how we record stuff and so forth. So everybody has so much experience nowadays that we can really say we know what we do when we record to finally achieve the final product in terms of sound, uh, which we have out now. Mm. With, with some of the singles that's off the album like The End Is Near Rule Break of the Title Track it's just absolutely flawless and as soon as I heard the single The End Is Near I said this is it this is an album that truly is up there but I want to ask how long did that process came about for you guys you all came in together and set the planning out, or did it take a bit of more time for that, just getting the chord arrangements and the vocals and the drums? How did it all come about? It's always taking time. 
Jamie. I mean, this is uh, our record is not recorded in three weeks anymore for us, like it was <laughs> back then at the beginning of the nineties. Yeah. That's also the major difference you can hear as a, as a quality product in the end, because uh, it takes a long time until we go th go through the demo phase and so forth. Which is a perfect sound already because Magus is just a, an absolutely amazing composer. Also, he knows what he does sound-wise, and uh, Matt and Magnus are just amazing in, in, in uh, working out new ideas. And then my ideas come in, Alex ideas, Tom's ideas. So we have five writing members. I just repeat myself, and this is very very helping uh, to make it a little bit quicker, of course. And, uh, you know, you don't have to somehow, I mean, we, in, in all the days we were in the re rehearsing room, putting an album together, which is also good yeah. and which we might do again, who knows, but, uh, I think it's, it's working like we do now with swapping files and ideas throughout Skype and internet is, uh, helping to make it a little bit, a little bit, uh, quicker and still in the good quality, you know, mm. Well, a couple of questions left before we wrap it up. I've only got 20 minutes. I wish I could talk to you for longer than that. I really could. I just love talking. <laughs> but um, I, know how, I know how busy you guys go. But the thing yeah. is, the, um, this is your first time coming to Australia. I just want to ask on a fan perspective, how do you go through your motions and the rituals leading up to a show? What is the routine that you get yourself into before you take the audience by the throat, so to speak, and claim this is your church type of thing? <laughs> yes, there's a certain routine for me. Uh, I can only speak for myself, and I know how the others uh, prepare too, but uh, I want to speak for myself. I have uh, tried to find as much of uh, sleep and relaxation I can get through the night. And then, of course, you have your sound check in the, uh, in the afternoon. After that, we have dinner, and then slightly I start to warm up my voice. I do for soundcheck a little bit, of course. We do one track for soundcheck, so I also warm up for this track. But um, um, when it comes to do the live show, I'm warming up my voice yeah. one to one and a half hour before the show, slightly doing my exercises. Because, you know, what, what I'm doing uh, is very much like screaming my ass off and doing bodybuilding with the voice. So you really have to warm up that muscle. Otherwise, you go on into problems. And uh, so that's what I'm uh, doing one and a half hours before the show, warming up the voice. And, and then slightly getting focused. And uh, then, then the, the adrenaline kicks in 20 to 15 minutes before the show. And that is getting more and more excited, e exciting even for us. Still, um, no matter how long we do this, we're still very excited when we go out there and, and have this positive uh, nervousity, um, which is mixed uh, with, with uh, being focused, and adrenaline, which is a wonderful cocktail nobody wants to miss anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, fans, please get your tickets. Um, I know there's a little competition going on at the moment on Metal Obsession Facebook page. All you have to do is have a purchase ticket at the moment and share the post and you can win a meet and greet with Primal Fear. There's two dates. There's one on the 11th of June up in Melbourne and the other one is a Sunday, the next day up in Sydney at Newtown Social Club. i will just ask before we let you go, would you come back and do a full tour around Australia next time or was this just a plan to test the water, so to speak? <laughs> We'd love to come, Jamie. Yeah. We'd really love to come. I mean, as I said before, it's not only a matter of what the band wants to do. It's also a matter of um, what the promoters provide and what they offer and so forth. So it's also, of course, a business part, business part behind it. Yeah. Fan-wise and, and, and human-wise, I would love to stay there forever. <laughs> I was about to say that. Why don't you just stay here? Just take up residency and just stay here. <laughs> It's yes. a beautiful place. But no, get your tickets. I've just received um, confirmation from the touring promoter that there are two bands that will be supporting Primal Fear. One is Black Majesty, a great band they are, and the other one is Hazmat. They're all great bands here. And we need some of these bands in Australia 
to get on a major headline tour with these bands from overseas as well, just to showcase a bit of Australian music to some of these bands from overseas. I mean, look at look at ACDC. They were taking the risk earlier on and went overseas and they got their chemistry and their fan base when they went over to Europe and then they went to America. But just to see how far they have come, these younger bands in Australia can take a leaf out of their shoes as well. Absolutely. We always support that. Looking yeah. forward to hit bands. Well, Ralph, if there's one last thing you'd like to say to the fans down under, what would you like to say to them? I would like to say again, and over and over again and again, that everybody is really excited to come. The first time to us, and uh, this is going to be amazing. Let's make two big parties in Melbourne and Sydney. So see you then in June, and um, stay healthy and uh, positive until then. Well, like I said, let's rock the places, okay? Yes. And please, go and grab this album called Rule Breaker, because... You will just be thrilled. If you don't have it, get it before you get to the concert because then you'll know the words. And if Ralph sees you in the crowd mixing up the words, he will miss up the words as well. So he'll blame you <laughs> for not knowing the words. <laughs> so, yeah. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, Ralph. It's all the time we got for. I cannot wait to see you in a couple of months' time. You're going to tear the state down. And we look forward to hearing more from you as well. Likewise, absolutely. So see you then, huh? See you again. Catch you later. Bye-bye, Jamie. Bye. Bye.